Hey, in the last video, we rebuilt the door hinges, installed and aligned the doors in preparation to install the quarter panel. But first, we need to address the inner and outer wheel well, wheel house. You can see damage. Uh, yeah, we've just made the decision we're going to replace it. So here we go. What we're going to do first is make a support for each side. Now, these are going to be a dual purpose, and I'll explain that as we go. Okay, now that's the base for the support. And we're installing the support, squaring it up. And now I've already welded it and I'm just securing it. And this is why. Okay, now this car had rear end collision damage and the trunk over rotated and the hinge damaged the weather strip guttering. So we're going to address that. So I've got this little port of power here. And that's going to provide a solid base so I can work this damage back into place. And it's never just one or two, one or two hits with a hammer. It, metal has to be worked back into place. And here it is. Inner and outer wheelhouse. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and cut the remnant of the inner wheelhouse out with the plasma cutter. Get those holes drilled out. And now we can separate those pieces that's the last little bit of the uh, inner wheelhouse we're using an air hammer to separate the pieces joining to the floor pan now the floor pan had a little bit of damage so Instead of going real in-depth, we're just going to fabricate a little section, get that put in. And we always want to use our zinc weld or a primer, weld-through primer, something with zinc in it. Get that secured into place. So instead of welding and then having to grind I'm just going to skip a step use the resistance welder and secure that in place Yeah, I put some extra length tongs on the uh, resistance welder, and uh, yeah, that thing is so much more versatile now. Okay, so this is the wheelhouse front. Now, this is the uh, little bracket that we need to move to the new wheelhouse, and this is how we're going to do it. We're just going to overlay that and line it up the old wheelhouse over the new wheelhouse we've drilled our holes we want to make sure we remember which uh, direction the bracket goes in with that little arrow and now we're going to separate it get that little bracket off and now you can see what I mean with the uh, long reach tongs just makes work so much easier and nicer instead of having to uh, weld it with a MIG welder or something. Now we can reproduce the factory finish resistance welding. And we'll shoot a little bit of uh, 
black epoxy on there. There it is. Okay, so we're going to be using a little bit of a well through primer on any surface that get, gets mated together. It's easier to do that on that part now. And what I'm doing here, there are several pieces that sandwich together in that area. They come together in this area where I'm cutting out. So it's much easier just to uh, trim that little piece so that it, the wheelhouse slides in easily. And I've already welded the inside, put those uh, welds to give it strength. Going to make the installation so much easier. Otherwise, you run into a big mess, unnecessary mess. And here I'm trimming out the rest of the old wheelhouse. Now here's a shot of that area I'm talking about where it's going to be sandwiched in between. We're getting that all prepped, straightening it out. Hammer and dolly. Getting all the oxidation off. And as always, a uh, primer, well through primer. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and remove the remnant of the quarter panel. And that's just gonna give us more access and make the wheelhouse installation easier. And last little bit on the front of the quarter panel. And now I'll show you a trick. So, traditionally, you would drill out all of the resistance wells. Well, sometimes I have to do that, but normally this is my uh, preferred method. If you're careful and you use an air hammer with the correct bit, you can separate panels from the resistance weld. And then you come back and just kind of use the can opener method. And that will break the resistance welds. And then you can come back and use the either the air hammer or... It'll leave a small divot that you can dress down with a uh, grinding wheel. And the benefit of that is if I had drilled out all these resistance welds, well, there would be holes all along this flange. And that's just going to make it more difficult when I install the new quarter panel. Because I'll have to have holes in the new quarter panel. And if I have a misalignment and <laughs> by luck line two holes up well now i have nothing to weld to so this is my preferred method when possible try it out now on this flange i have to drill out the uh resistance welds otherwise i'm really going to distort and cause damage to that uh panel because you can see that lip is there isn't a lot of lip there to begin with and so we're just going to get that cleaned up hammer and dolly straighten it and now let's check our work see what we've done gotten all the flanges and edges cleaned up straightened up 
Now, I know this is wheelhouse installation uh, video, but it, it all goes together. And now this is a really good shot of that method I was telling you about. I mean, you can literally just break the resistance welds in most cases. And this is a pretty delicate piece. So, uh, yeah, using the right angle, the right air pressure. Just paying attention is the biggest thing. Because we definitely would not want to drill a bunch of holes in this piece. This is the weather strip gutter, trunk gutter. And now we're cleaning it up with the wire wheel. There's what we have so far. Yeah, the new quarter panel does not come with this piece. So, yeah. We want to take care and not, uh, not cut it off or damage it. Okay, even if no one ever knows, we always follow the correct procedure. And we are using POR15. We've completely coated all of the inside areas before we go any farther, before we install the inner and outer wheelhouse, uh, quarter panel. All of this is protected. I came back, knocked off any uh, any loose rust or anything like that. Now, POR15 is an encapsulator. So the metal doesn't have to be media blasted or anything like that. It just can't have any loose dirt scale. So I went over it with a wire wheel, cleaned it up, brushed it on. It is sprayable. Hey, now we've uh, now we've got a good job going. It doesn't matter if somebody's watching or they never know. Always do good work. Always do the your best work. Always be the best craftsman you can be. Okay, so we are drilling some plug well holes. And that's going to mate to the inner quarter panel. And that bracket that I had showed you earlier that was rusted and we uh, cleaned up, primed, that is going to attach at that point. And so we've cleaned this area up. That's the inner quarter panel. Primed. And here we go. There it is. So I've already got all our uh, C clamps into place. We always want to have everything really sandwiched nice and tight. We don't want to be sloppy. Get good, nice, tight uh, fit. Using our porter power to keep some upward pressure. So we don't have a bunch of gaps. That's our little uh, support there. Time to weld. Get this thing welded into place. Now we weld that from the bottom with a plug weld, but I'm going to go ahead and place a small weld, just a uh, safety weld I call them on top also. So now we've moved inside and that's the front edge of the inner quarter panel or inner wheel well mated to the inner quarter panel. And so now I want to replicate the factory instead of plug welding. Well, I have set this area up for our resistance welder. 
That's going to give us a really nice factory finish. And you have to keep in mind all of these joints, well, they're going to have seam sealer on them. This inner wheel well, well, it's going to have uh, a some type of encapsulator or a, uh, what am I think, trying to say, uh, undercoat, light undercoat to replicate the factory. And I'm doing a lot of shaking there because the resistance welder is pretty heavy. Yeah, and with those uh, tongs, they're really nice, but uh, yeah, it's kind of crazy. Okay, here we go, man. It's uh, finished off. Nice, tight, sandwiched panels. It's been dressed down. Seam sealer will go over those joints. It'll all look factory. And our little tab is in the correct position. Here's a shot from the outside. And I finish as I go. And what I mean is I don't have to come back to this area. It's already been sanded. Uh, well, this, I've already uh, finished out this area. I've already made it and repaired the rust. Sorry that I lost that footage, but that's the finish out. And so I'm setting up for the next video, which is going to be the upper trunk installation. Check it out. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for watching.